Let's bring in Ross Gerber, president and CEO of Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Ross, always, always great to speak with you. Thanks for making time today. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's start with the inflation data out of the U.S. I'm curious just to get your take on it because, you know, it's, it's always interesting when you see a little bit of both, that headline coming down, but core inflation accelerating. How do you interpret what's happening and, and what does it mean for the U.S. central bank? Well, I think the central bank has this all wrong. You know, the fact that core inflation has stayed high is merely a byproduct of stronger wages among lower income workers. And this is actually great news for the economy. And th this is to be expected after workers had not really seen increases in pay for almost three decades. So, you know, the fact that there's some wage inflation here is actually really good for the United States, while all the other areas of inflation have been dropping dramatically. And keep in mind that the shelter index in the inflation numbers has a six-month lag and is showing a 9% increase in annualized rents when, in fact, rents are going down today. So, so when you look at the real inflation in the economy, inflation is dead, the Fed is done, and interest rates on the two-year are down towards 4%, and that's really the direction the Fed needs to go today. Inflation is dead. You could, you could make that call at, at this point, Ross, because, I mean, we're, yeah, we're just dead. talking, yeah, we're talking Bank of Canada today, and, and the bank is a little bit hesitant to be doing that at this point. Uh, you know, they're confident about getting to 3%, but to the 2% target, uh, that looks like it's still going to be a challenge. Do you think that the, the Fed in the U.S. is going to make it all the way to 2 well, first of all, the 2% number is completely arbitrary and not actually good for the economy. In fact, my entire career, we always modeled 3% as the average inflation rate over time in the United States. And the fact that the Fed is using 2% is basically in a post-financial crisis economy. And this is not the kind of economy we want for the United States when we're onshoring manufacturing, when we want to see rising employment and wages among, you know, what I would call lower and middle income workers. 3% inflation is perfectly fine for our society and for our economy. And I think that's where the Fed's going to end up being, because if you want to get growth and you want to have growth that isn't because of stimulation, because of the Fed, you're going to have a little bit higher inflation. And especially if you're bringing manufacturing to the United States. But this is not bad to have two or three percent inflation, and especially because the actual rate of inflation is going down, not up. But what we're really worried about is a recession. And this mm. is what the Fed needs to really be concerned about, is the tightening of credit here in the United States has gotten very tight very quickly, especially here in California, where these banking issues are quite severe. Right. Okay. So, I mean, not only has the, the Fed raised borrowing costs, uh, but then some of those banks are pulling back lending just because of the situation. Can you, can you walk us through how you're seeing that play out? Yeah, well, we're very close with First Republic Bank, for example, which has many, many customers that are our clients. And mm. and we, I mean, First Republic is a massive lender to so many residential and commercial uh, businesses here in California. And obviously, they're obviously not lending aggressively at the moment, along with Silicon Valley Bank, which, you know, funded a lot of the startups that help the growth element of the economy here in California. But when you look at the average bank here today, when you look at rates and credit quality, you basically can't get a loan, whether it's for home construction or whether you're trying to small, start a small business. It's just not happening. And, and, you know, eventually this causes a lot of damage, you know, to future innovation in the United States, but also to the general economy. Okay, so with concerns about the economy in, in North America, in the U.S., um, the Chinese economy, that's opening up still, uh, and, and right. that's giving you some, some uh, reason for optimism for some particular companies right now, Ross? Absolutely. And the fact that China completely reversed their COVID policy at the end of last year was the smartest thing they could have done because, you know, the COVID policies were going to destroy their economy. But China didn't do the massive stimulus package that the United States did that caused all of our inflation. So they're seeing a rebound in their economy, but they're seeing it at a much slower pace than the United States, but they're not getting inflation. And so we expect the Chinese economy to accelerate at a much more reasonable pace over the next 12 months. And this, along with the Chinese traveler, 
which is coming back, is what we're mostly bullish on, is consumer spending from Chinese wealthy consumers and also travelers that are going to be hitting Disneyland and, and the casinos all around the world uh, as we speak. Yeah, okay, so there's the consumer goods side, and on, on that side, you're looking at uh, the luxury goods uh, maker, LVMH. But then on uh, the casino side of things, uh, Las Vegas Sands, that's a company that you like right now. Right. So we, we just added um, Louis Vuitton to my fund GK on Monday, and they just reported great earnings today at a nice rally. Um, and then, you know, Las Vegas Sands, we've been adding to over the last couple of weeks, um, also in my fund and with clients. And, and you know, the Las Vegas Sands owns all the casinos in Macau, well, a, a, a lot of casinos in Macau, and then the Marina Bay Sands in Singapore, where a lot of Chinese tourists go as well. So we're very, very bullish on con Chinese consumer spending over the next couple of years.